So what is the cause of trigeminal neuralgia? So uh, the way to diagnose is clinical. The cause of trigeminal neuralgia in most of the patients is idiopathic. Idiopathic means there is no tumor. If you do the MRI, you don't, you know, grossly see anything. But actually, there is a blood vessel which is compressing on the nerve in the region where the nerve is most sensitive. So this is uh, traditionally called as idiopathic. It is not idiopathic. We know the reason. But the microvascular compression theory was proposed in the last century, the last part, and people acted on it and device surgery. The first surgery was done in 1968, the typical surgery that we do today with some improvements because of the new gadgets. So every nerve is made up of multiple nerve fibers. So this is a electron micrograph of trigeminal nerve and each and every nerve fiber is covered with myelin. So whenever there is electrical current flowing through a particular nerve fiber, this current is not short-circuited to the neighboring nerve fiber. So this is the action or this is a function of myelin. And uh, you can see the simile in a cable. In an electric cable, there are small wires and each wire has got insulation. So there is no short circuit. So when there is a blood vessel, which is, you know, in these patients very closely related to the nerve in a particular region of the nerve, and it is continuously pulsating against the nerve, what it does is it destroys the myelin in some of the nerve fibers. When one touches a particular trigger point, that sensation as it is being carried by the nerve fiber gets short circuited. And there is a sudden short circuit or pain, which starts with that. In initial phase, you will see that these patients have uh, a period in between when they have no pain at all for a week or a month because the body is trying to rebuild the myelin. As the day days go by, the blood vessel elongates as happens in everyone. But in these people, the blood vessel is already near the nerve. So as it elongates, it burrows deep inside the nerve and its pulsations start hitting the nerve fibers and then it becomes a almost continuous kind of a problem without any pain holidays. This is a picture of trigeminal nerve, actual microscopic picture during surgery and this is pons. So it is coming out of brain and then leaving through the, through the foramina to go outside and supply the face. So this is a short segment of the nerve and the portion which is near the pons is most sensitive because it is also called as overscanner Radlich zone which means that the myelination pattern changes in this area from central myelin to peripheral myelin. So the central myelin is made up of oligodendrocytes and peripheral myelin by Schwann cells. So this area is very sensitive because there is change over from one myelin to the other myelin. And uh, that is why this is a very sensitive zone. And this zone can spread from uh, pons right up to the tip of the uh, this portion, intracranial portion of the nerve. So in short, as you can see here, these people have a very, very closely related blood vessel and it is just touching the nerve here. As the age advances, the blood vessels become elongated and this happens in everyone. But if your blood vessel is not near the trigeminal nerve, then it will not cause a problem. But if it is near by, you know, by birth, it is near the trigeminal nerve and this area is constricted in your anatomy, this volume is constricted, posterior fossa is small, then as this blood vessel elongates, it starts bending and folding on itself and compressing the nerve. So after a few months, this is what happens. It bends further and really uh, rams into the nerve. And maybe after a few years, this is what happens. So as you can see here, this causes severe compression on the nerve. And it is not only a static compression. It is a compression which is pulsatile and apparently pulsatile compression is required for the generation of trigeminal neuralgia. There are instances in which tumors can also cause trigeminal neuralgia very rarely. But these tumors have pushed one or another blood vessel into the nerve usually. Tumors by themselves very, very rarely cause trigeminal neuralgia. So it is that rare. I will show you how the compression looks under microscope. What you see here is a highly enlarged view. This is the trigeminal nerve and this is what is known as the superior cerebellar artery and uh, as you can see it is it is supposed to travel like this but it is turning in and having a big fold and burrowing itself into the belly of the nerve and you can see the pulsations which are hitting the nerve with each pulsation the nerve is moving on one side and very severe compression this is lodged and refusing to come out so every minute 70 to 80 times this blood vessel is hitting the nerve and 
this is where we are removing it from the nerve and this will eventually relieve the trigeminal neuralgia. We put a Teflon sponge in between the two so that this doesn't go back and, you know, ram again into the nerve. So this was one example. This is another example of the pulsations of the blood vessel hitting the nerve. You can literally see that the nerve is deformed here and there are areas in the nerve which are almost transparent and you see a reddish hue of the blood vessel through the nerve. It has become ribbon-like here. So these were the examples. So as I told you, the myelination slowly is destroyed by the blood vessel and the neuralgia starts.